Are you ready for the unboxing of the Huawei new smartphone? Oh wait, no it's not. But it is a LTE 4G focus. There we go. This is a Huawei RRU remote radio unit. Uh, it's in their 3900 series. This is a 1800 MHz uh, 4G amplifier. It can also run DSM, UMTS, but also LTE. Um, just with 8 carriers on DSM, 4 carriers on UMTS, and 1 carrier on LTE. And those are 2G, 3G, or 4G, uh, the generations of the mobile network. And I got this little baby to show you. Um, my best guess is this uh, unit is uh, somewhere around, uh, if we are in 18, it's from 13, it's uh, 4 or 5 years old. So it has only seen a minimal service compared to some of the other radio units I have shown you. But um, let's first take a look at the, its different uh, ports on the outside and uh, then we'll get inside of it, check it apart. I'm pretty excited to see how this compares to some of the uh, Western uh, and US um, brands of amplifiers, but uh, we can only get, ex get excited. Surprised. Yeah, let's look inside. Let's start out here at the front. Here we can see the uh, stickers with the, uh, the name of the amplifier. This is not uh, quite the right model name, uh, but this is all there is uh, visible on the outside of this unit. Over here under the handle there is a small uh, display with six LEDs for some various uh, indication of how the unit is running. On the uh, underside there is uh, connect connections for power and the network, grounding uh, terminal and then there are the uh, antenna A and B input outputs. Also has a nice little sticker with the uh, warning radio transmitted device. Warning, grounding! Also, it can be hard. Uh, it has these uh, small plastic lids uh, on the side. Um, seems this is for mounting some kind of auxiliary unit that does not have any um, electrical connections. And I must say, this is a pretty, uh, pretty nice uh, plastic enclosure. They actually uh, did some design work on this. Uh, this is like the iPhone of uh, base stations. Um, if we take a look through the uh, fins here, you can see there's quite a lot of heat sinking on the left side, and then we have the diplexer module at the bottom, and at the right side there's not so much um, uh, heat sink uh, fins, but so over here we have some of the boards mounted on the uh, on the right side, and we have the uh, power amplifier sitting on the huge heat sink over here. And under this uh, lid, we will probably find the uh, optical network connection, diagnostics uh, port, and the power input. The whole unit weighs uh, a good uh, 23 kilograms, so it's a quite heavy beast to handle. But uh, let's take a look inside. Underneath uh, the lid, there are the power connections. There is also the uh, two uh, optical uh, Inputs, there's a primary and it says primary both, but E and W, not sure what that is. Oh, there's actually a reset button. And there's an uh, external alarm uh, connector as well. Uh, there's also a little guide on how to cut the cable when coming in. Uh, that is probably for the power connector. There's also a little stamp there, 12. So this is made later then, and I'm not sure how the Chinese write their dates, but that might be the date. Um, but yeah, let's get a look on the inside of the unit. Plastic enclosure is off. Um, that was a little harder than expected. Uh, but actually here we have some stickers. We can see this is the remote radio unit 39008. 
Uh, this has a power rating of 40, 48 volt DC at 10.5 ampere, so that is roughly 500 watts. Um, and my guess was not completely bad from 2013, that this is actually from May 2012. And I think I will break some seals. Or was it the warranty? Oh well. Um, this is uh, probably um, some uh, one uh, 20 watt output power amplifier. Uh, that is uh, from the power rating, uh, I guess that. Um, but uh, we will take a look. Maybe it's uh, two, two times 20 watt or um, just one times 40. But I think this is um, down to a 20 watt uh, total um, due to the uh, quite low uh, power rating. But uh, let's get the, the uh, heat sinks off this. Let's see how much there can be taken apart now. Okay, so there's some kind of wire holding onto the diplexer. Okay, seems like it's just a grounding band. It's just a single screw sitting here. Now oh, look at this beauty. I hope this is a uh, a complete copper plate, but most likely it's just a surface treatment. Underneath here we can uh, we can see it says uh, RX and B, A and B. So these are the receiving receiving. Um, Amplifiers and up here it says monitor, transmit, monitor, transmit. Um, but the actual large transmitting uh, outputs must be the two large uh, ones here. I actually broke off some uh, thin PCB here, so uh, this was not the uh, first unit to remove if I was to take this apart normally. I would take the uh, PCB side off first, but yeah, well, I broke warranty anyway. So uh, this is uh, for later. Right now, I just want to get all this thing apart. So um, this part probably won't come off unless I undo uh, the screws on the other side. So uh, let's do that first. I wasn't too wrong about uh, taking the filter off uh, first as a uh, not so smart, um, but it wasn't the other side that has to come off first, it is actually this whole part should have come off as one. So this now comes right off. So. Now we have here the power input section, optical input section. Looks like there's some serious heat sinking right here. This is uh, the uh, transmitting amplifier. Um, unless this is the transmitting amplifier because this is actually what was sitting um, where the two connectors for the diplexer were. The setup here. So they connect to this PCB behind this uh, plate. What these uh, two big heat sink uh, CPUs are, that will be interesting to see. That's a quite... Um, hmm. Looks a little... Uh, not that great quality, this inductor. But uh, yeah. 
overall it uh, looks quite nice so far but uh, I will get all these screws uh, off so we can take uh, a look further inside excited like a kid at Christmas this is uh, Ooh, what to open first? Let's start with the power amplifier. Woo! Lots of gold plating, yeah. So this actually has uh, four power amplifiers, uh, RF mass, uh, RF fats. Um, normally I would only see two, so that is. Uh, Probably running in a uh, yeah a push pull or Dorothy or something like that. The whole uh, circuit analy analysis uh, part will have to wait uh, till later in this video. I will take some high resolution uh, pictures of this and then uh, walk you through the circuit. But this uh, will uh, surely get interesting. Uh, very beautiful uh, circuit we have here. Lots of. Uh, easy to follow path and explain the uh, principles uh, of how this works. Now over here on the uh, receiving part, let's see if we can get this shield off. This is uh, quite heavily uh, uh, a heatsink shield or something like that because there a lot of the screws had um, com compound uh, heatsink compound on them. Yeah, we can see where that came from. Uh, that came from the underside of the of this PCB um, where it connects to the heatsink on the uh, on the other side. But wow, this is also some piece of work. Clearly there are, um, we have some digital uh, to analog processing, which I would assume was on the upper part uh, due to the connection up through the shield here to the transmitting amplifier. And over here where the RX uh, connects, there should be some front ends for the um, analog to digital conversion. Then there are the usual FPGAs, etc., CPU um, in the middle here. And these two large ones, um, ah, they are actually DC DC converters. That must be part of the whole uh, power supply unit. Once again, I will uh, get some good high res pictures of this, uh, do some circuit uh, analysis on it, and uh, yeah, see where we get. So up next is when I find my, my drill bits, because I'm not opening uh, the diplexer by hand. I have only used the screwdriver for all the other stuff because I lost my bit set for my, uh, for my hand drill. So until then, I'll get this apart next. About 200 screws uh, later, uh, I had to do this by hand because this is a uh, Torx uh, 8 uh, head. So up here we have a little uh, feedback uh, circuitry uh, for these uh, four uh, monitoring uh, outputs of the diplexer. And uh, let's see if we can get this copper plate. Often, uh, if I forgot any screws or yeah, came right off. So here we have the 
nice diplexer. You can just take the camera down. So here we have the opened up diplexer. Um, the two uh, raised pins here were the uh, transmitting uh, inputs. As we can see, the cavities go over here to uh, one uh, output or one antenna connector. And then we have the receiving channel over here. And for the uh, other transmitting um, input to the diplexer, it goes through these cavities and then through this uh, long rod over to the uh, other antenna output. And the receiving part of this goes through these series of cavities to this connector. Uh, this seems to be a uh, copper um, surface treated uh, aluminium case. These, uh, I have seen these as ceramic resonators before. These are um, silvered metal, highly likely a, a magnetic uh, material. Now the uh, tuning pins sitting uh, in the lid. We can see that some are uh, polished, uh, rounded, but some are also just um, screws with threaded uh, with threads on them still. So um, it's not all uh, that precision minded here. But overall, a, a very uh, nice looking uh, diplexer. Good ma good machinery. Seems to be all the. Uh, right insulators and so such in place. A little uh, weird with the, this long uh, rod. That's quite unusual to, to see a uh, such a long one, but I guess that's the price it has to pay for having a long form factor that is still uh, quite small. There's a little stack of uh, different connectors. Some RF connectors, um, different uh, watertight feed throughs, uh, power connectors, DC DC converters. Um, so it's not that much uh, great gear that comes out to, to be reused, but it's a highly interesting uh, piece of equipment. Now, uh, for the uh, next teardown, I can tell you that I have a, another hot. Huawei, Huawei uh, radio unit here. So um, look forward to that. So until next time, see ya. As this teardown got uh, pretty long, I will split this video up, up into two parts. There will be part one, which you just saw, which is the teardown itself. And then there will be a circuit analysis video, which will uh, go through all these pictures that you see flipping through behind me. These are all uh, high-res pictures that I took off the uh, amplifier circuit boards when I took it apart and then I have researched the different ICs and so on that are located on the board and I will give a walkthrough of the um, circuit and how it works.